Gurum Panunku is the first village in Andhra Pradesh Vishakapatnam which has shifted to chemical free farming and cow urine is used here through the Vasan which is a watershed, uh, watershed support services and activity network. Now in this down to earth coverage we would focus on some of the important aspects. The next was fund cut. There has been a significant fund cut in the schemes like Poshan Abhiyan where the actual spending was only 400 crore however the tabled budget was 3,000 700 crores. Similarly, for the Saksham Anganwadi services, again, there was a significant budget cut which was seen. There has to be a focus on combating the illegal trade of toxic metal and the convention for that would be held at the Minimata Convention on Mercury. Uh, this would be hosted by Ind uh, Indonesia and it would focus on the illegal mercury trade which is usually uh, seen with uh, various countries and then is the largest genetic library for bean cassava and tropical forage which would be opened in Colombia. There would be nearly 37,000 samples of bean from 114 countries, 6,000 samples of cassava and 26,000 samples of tropical forage which would be preserved here. In India we have seen an increasing number of institutional deliveries however uh, this case study is of Tikamgarh and Tikamgarh nearly 85 89% of all the deliveries are in the hospital and the healthcare, which has increased from 28% which is a significant jump in last 15 years. The trend has been seen across the country with institutional deliveries increasing from 40% to 88% and the first is the Janni Surak. There are various schemes which have been launched for the same. The first one that we focus on is Janni Suraksha Yojana uh, where it was launched in 2005 and it provides uh, women opting for childbirth in the hospitals would be given a direct cash benefit transfer in rural areas and urban areas. The scheme is targeted to nine dis different states and uh, we have seen that India accounts for nearly 60% of its maternal death and 70% of its infant deaths. So definitely uh, we need to have a strong focus on Janni Suraksha program. The next is the Beneficiaries under this have increased. Uh, we are also talking about Janni Suraksha, uh, Shishu Suraksha Karyakram, which entitles benefits for uh, pregnant female to have transport between home and institution for delivery procedures, blood transfusion, complications during antenatal and postnatal period, and sick infants up to one year to be covered. The next is Pradhan Mantri Surakshit Matritva Abhiyan, which provides free assured quality uh, ancillary uh, nurse services and then we have the Laksha program which is labor room quality improvement initiative where better quality labor rooms and maternity operation theaters in public facilities to be built up. Apart from this there are seven estates where they are in institutionalizing uh, delivery and making it much more uh, better. For example Shramik Seva Prasuti Sahayata Yojana in Madhya Pradesh, Ayushmati scheme in West Bengal, Chiranjivi Yojana in Assam and Gujarat, Mamta friendly hospitals in Delhi. So those are some of the schemes at the state level. So even the women in the rural, rural areas uh, are now uh, better well versed because of the institutionalized delivery complications can be handled and safe delivery can be witnessed. The impact of incentivization has been seen across the region. The neonatal mortal, uh, mortality rate in the home and the public uh, private sectors have been significantly different and same works with infant mortality rate. Some of the major causes for maternal death are anemia, hypertension and postpartum hemorrhage which accounts for postpartum hemorrhage itself accounts for 35% of all the deaths in India. WHO has defined as blood loss of 500 ml or more within 24 hours after the birth of the child as a cause of concern and uh, the aspirational districts across India have been chosen on priority to work on this. Now with uh, more of cattle being given declofenic as one of the anti-inflammatory drugs uh, the issue has been transferred to vultures and we have seen a declining population of vultures. Three drugs, acyclofenic, ketoprofen and nimesilide were introduced as an alternative to diclofenic. However, niacids have been banned for animal use in 2006 because it caused a huge spread of vulture deaths but still they are being used. There are eight species of vulture which are under the threat of extinction and the population has declined from 40,000 in 2000 
2003 to only uh, is now only 18000 uh, this is because of the use of diclofenac now what could be uh, the uh, implications we have seen white precipitates on the kidney and the heart of the vultures the vulture conservation action plan for 2020 and 25 uh, recommends that there should be ban on the veterinary use of these three drugs and those who are given these drugs should be separated from the other population and there should be a separate treatment protocol which should be done they should be uh, cremated and vultures should not be exposed to them so 2006 diclofenac was banned to reduce the shrinking population of uh, vultures then acyclofenac got converted into diclofenac within hours it was administered to cattle nimesulide causes visceral gout and renal failure in vultures 30 hours within ingestion and ketoprofen causes uh, death within 48 hours after ingestion because it has a very high toxicity level so those are some of the drugs which have been uh, significantly seen the major habitat loss has been seen in bikaner in rajasthan raigarh in maharashtra jaisalmer in rajasthan kamrup in assam and surendranagar in gujarat then is the concerns with global warming there are new departments like heat officers which are being appoint appointed by various counties for example florida miami county has appointed a heat officer the idea is to work on health vulnerability bring in public awareness create community awareness and focus on the action plan what could be the next report similarly we have seen in sierra leone uh, in greece again the extrema global is one of the smartphone applications that helps us to allow real time heat health related risk africa is again vulnerable to um, this uh, heat problem and there have been lack of sleep and high fatigue which has resulted in increased violence against women and children in us california oregon and washington have legislatures which require employers to provide training and education about heat related illness and provisions for the work site and rest breaks should be given the next is coming to organic farming uh, as uh, azospirillum which is Uh, seen in sorghum maize millets and fodder grass then we have azetobacter azetobacter crocoam which talks about indian soil how it can be grown then we have blue green algae which can be used as bio fertilizers you have rice uh, um, rice or uh, rice plants where they can be grown uh, so linga tribal community in karnataka has been working with lantana uh, to uh, develop furniture and lantana now covers 40% of the western ghats it was native to south america and came to india as an ornamental species in 1800 but it became invasive and uh, grew on a substantial part of western ghats and now we are talking about similar other invasive invasive species and how it could be controlled lantana has been mostly seen in madhya pradesh karnataka and tamil nadu atri set up lantana craft center where uh, solangia uh, so, soliga artisans are working at malai mahade sure hills and developing furniture which is much more sturdy termite resistant and can hold weight uh, so how it is done is the stems are boiled for 3 to 4 hours within 24 hours of collection and then the bark is removed the stem is cleaned and then uh, bended into desired shape to create furniture 80% income can be generated in this process cow shelters have been built in chatisgarh under the godhan nyay yojana and this gives a boost to organic industry and dairy industry under energy came uh, russia is one of the major producers of oil and gas and uh, recent sanctions have seen uh, have been seen on russia 60% of the global capacity is being controlled by russia there are various shipments which have been recently sus sus uh, suspended international agency uh, energy agency says that 3 million barrels of russian crude oil may not find its way into market from april uh, again there have been uh, the rising cost it's not just because of the russia ukraine war but it was because of the strong economic recovery post pandemic and lack of investment during this period in new infrastructure which brought in a sudden demand for oil uh, brent oil is the crude oil through which we see the international benchmark the prices for brent crude oil has increased significantly the impact on european union is worse because 40% of natural gas 27% of crude oil 47% 
kind of solid fuel like coal comes from Russia in European Union and this has been released by Eurostat which is the official statistics for European Union. Now uh, we are also talking about focusing on LNG but LNG has its own limitations. Uh, Ukraine um, has been one of the major centers and we must replace the Russian gas with LNG uh, for the potential supply in the next year so that gas storage uh, can weather out the price fluctuation and uh, then this process also has a lot of methane emission which is harmful to the atmosphere. Again for the wheat and corn and sunflower exports Ukraine and Russia are known uh, and since invasion the, the Ukraine-Russia conflict, the prices for uh, wheat, corn and barley have jumped significantly. Europe in 2000 was using a significant proportion of natural gas and oil and very small proportion of bioenergy. However, recently bioenergies, renewable energies and e-gas have significant proportion in the total energy chart of Europe and that reduces the dependence on Russia significantly. Now, in the previous term when Within was the vice president in Obama government. Uh, there was an idea to work on the shale gas and Russian shale gas infrastructure was supported by you. Uh, the Ukraine shale gas infrastructure was supported by uh, US. Now, uh, in US, in 2005, shale gas was first uh, discovered through hydraulic fracturing or fracking and horizontal drilling. However, since then, the dependency on other nations have reduced, the imports have reduced, but at the same time, shale gas has its own limitations because uh, it this process requires fracking, which, reduce, which requires huge amount of water, reduces toxic chemical gases, and is a, a cause of concern for environmentalists. The process through which it has to be handled is to be again very very sharp uh, then methane emissions have also increased it is believed that 89 percent of shale gas is produced in the united states and methane emissions are highly related to it lng uh, is a natural gas which is converted into liquid by cooling it to minus 162 degrees celsius and this reduces the volume to 600 times and therefore transportation becomes easier but um, this again is a concern for most of the areas where pipelines, gas pipelines cannot reach, LNG can be transported in liquid forms. But natural gas, when it's extracted, carbon dioxide is released, but in the process, leakage of methane is seen and this is detrimental to the environment and this is a significant proportion that is seen. We are also talking about net zero emissions and reducing LNG use by 55% in 2050 as compared to 2020 and this is the chart of the various countries behavior over the years and their usage of LNG gases. The war with Russia is not new. Uh, we have seen that same energy crisis happened in the Qom Kippur war in 1976 and Iranian revolution in 1979 and uh, the OPEC nations actually saw, witnessed a huge uh, fuel spike. Russia accounts for 7% of the nickel, one third of palladium and one tenth of aluminium and copper, one fifth of battery grade um, nickel. Ukraine is one of the major suppliers for, suppliers for noble gas like neon and krypton used for semiconductors and electronic systems and US is highly dependent on it. 90% of the semi, uh, semiconductor grade neon goes to US. Now uh, Ukraine is also seeing that it holds potential reserves for lithium oxide which is close to 5 lakh tons and uh, their lithium can be extracted for rechargeable batteries uh, which can be used in electric vehicles and mobile vehicles. So those are some of the avenues where Russia and Ukraine actually have lots and lots of mineral resources which are intrinsically required for most of the new generation technologies as well. So even if we talk about switching from uh, oil, we would be uh, talking about requirement for lithium, which is again one of the centers in Ukraine. So those are some of the things that we need to focus on. These countries are the centers for most of the mineral resources, most of the fossil fuel resources, and therefore are start having a geopolitical hold on uh, the neighboring areas as well. So that was for today. In this section, we have 
talked about some of the important topics from down to earth. Lantana was one of the very important topics. Institutional deliveries, another important topic. Uh, vultures, which all uh, medicines have what impact on vulture. The four medicines that we have understood in the diagram, extremely important. And then the energy game, the Russia and the Ukraine. What are the major reserves with them and how it can be actually worked. Uh, so this paragraph itself is an extremely important paragraph that you need to cover. Uh, so those were some of the key things that we have discussed for today. Stay tuned. We will be covering the next fortnightly edition for Down to Earth shortly. Have a wonderful day ahead.